welcome, welcome one and all to The Late Show here on CBS. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is an exciting evening. I mean, the air is just crackling with mild anticipation because <laughs> Americans are on the edge of the middle of their seats waiting <laughs> for the possible eventual release of the actual Mueller report. <laughs> All we know so far is what we've been told by Attorney General and cheerful mortician William Barr. <laughs> Barr's, Barr's summary was uh, not quite four pages long, while the full Mueller report is nearly 400 pages. That's Harry Potter length. Mm. <laughs> and everybody wants to read Donnie Trump and the Idiot of Azkaban. <laughs> and the Goblet of Kofefe. Now, Congress uh, got tired of waiting around, so today the House Judiciary Committee approved a subpoena to get the full Mueller report. <laughs> That's right, these people. Yes. These people, these people love House Committee procedural votes. <laughs> hey, right? Who wants to road trip down to D.C. Tuesday for the, for the Financial Services and General Government Subcommittee hearing on the IRS budget request for the fiscal year 2020? <laughs> oh, the funny thing is, I, I think these people actually mean that. Now, uh, Attorney General Barr has said that he's currently redacting Mueller's report in preparation to sending it to Congress. But House uh, Judiciary Chair Jerry Nadler says, nah. Are you willing to negotiate any middle ground in terms of redactions no. of the... You're not. No. The committee must see everything. Yes, the committee must see everything. Yes. <laughs> Just like Patriots owner Robert Kraft, they demand the full release. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Trump... Trump has already weighed in on Jerry Nadler via tweet claiming that Jerry Big Nads is hypocritical. In 1998, Representative Nadler strongly opposed the release of the Star Report on Bill Clinton. No information whatsoever or would or could be legally released, but with the no collusion Mueller report, which the Dems hate, he wants it all. Nothing will ever satisfy them. Well... I don't know about nothing. <laughs> Seeing you hauled out of the White House would be pretty satisfying. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, in fact, Nadler did not oppose the release of the Star Report to Congress. He opposed the release of the Star Report to the public. He wants the Mueller report released to Congress like previous reports have been. But that did not sit well with Georgia Republican and man who thinks you can't tell he's wearing glasses. <laughs> Doug Collins. Congressman Collins didn't like Nadler comparing the Mueller report to the Star Report. At, at least, I, th I think that's what he's saying. This is what's happening here. The, the chairman wants you to look at one thing when the reality is another thing. He's wanting you to look at this bottle of water and say, this is full. And then he's wanting you to look at this bottle of water and say, it's full too. It doesn't work. You can't say the Star Report, or <coughs> even going back to impeachment, which we'll get to in a minute, and then come along and say, Mueller is full too. It's, it's the same. They're not the same. He wants you to think that this bottle is the same as, as this bottle. He wants... Wait, hold on. Shut up, everybody. This bottle... <laughs> Start over, start over, hold on. He wants you to think that this bottle, that this full bottle is the same with the bottle I got hidden behind my back, which, which I assure you is empty, but I will fight you tooth and nail to keep you from ever seeing. I'm just telling you, it doesn't pass the smell test because water does not smell, unlike this one, which is called fire water. And I'm telling you,
And if you drink enough of it, everything I just said makes sense. <laughs> now, now Republicans are scrambling to any microphone they can find to say, please don't tell us anything. Why would any member of Congress demand that Congress know less? Uh, I, you don't want us to know nothing. <laughs> if you tell us stuff, we might know stuff. Then we might do stuff, because... <laughs> Knowledge is power, and I wouldn't trust us with a burnt match. Now, <laughs> remember, remember, here's a warning. Remember how sweet Oedipus had it before he knew stuff. I mean, <laughs> he was king, he had a hot cougar wife, and, and two eyeballs. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. You know. <laughs> Speaking of complete nonsense, Donald Trump. <laughs> Last night, uh, the president was the featured speaker at a fundraiser for the National Republican Congressional Committee, or NERC. And he gave them some advice on how to win back the House. We're going to watch those vote tallies. You know, I keep hearing about uh, the election and uh, the, the various uh, counting measures that they have. There were a lot of close elections that were, they seemed to every single one of them, went Democrat. If it was close, they say the Democrat, well, there's something going on, fella. You gotta, hey, you gotta be a little bit more paranoid than you are. More? They have to be more paranoid? <laughs> Republicans already think that caravans of immigrants from three different Mexicos are coming to steal <laughs> their lake houses and gay marry their wedding cakes. As ever, Trump was concerned about secrecy. I don't want to use names because I'll get in trouble because it's always somebody's going to leak this whole damn speech to the media. Yes. <laughs> Someone's going to leak this speech, he said, directly into the C-SPAN camera. <laughs> Oranges, Doc. Oranges. Uh, he continued. If you had a normal president, I don't want to say that negatively, I think I'm very normal. <laughs> you know what a normal person rarely says? I'm a normal person. <laughs> That's what an alien says. Hello, fellow humans, I am very normal and also human. You go out, have food in a public place. I will supervise your delicious baby. And the normalcy continued. They have these brilliant guys from MIT, where my uncle was a professor, by the way, for 40 years, brilliant guy, Dr. John Trump. A lot of people find it hard to believe that I had a professor, one of the smartest people in the history of MIT, in my blood. Yes. <laughs> That's true. In, yes, in my blood. <laughs> like the magic school bus, they just miniaturized my uncle in MIT injected him directly into my bloodstream, and he just, hold on, what? He's just, he's just crossed into my pancreas. Ah, watch the driving. Watch the driving, Uncle John. Then Trump turned to America's number one threat, wind. Hillary wanted to put up wind, wind. If you, if you have a windmill anywhere near your house, congratulations, your house just went down 75% in value. And, of course, it's like a graveyard for birds. <laughs> if you love birds, you'd never want to walk under a windmill, because it's a very sad, sad sight. It's like a cemetery. We put a little... We put a little statue for the poor birds. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's, uh... <laughs> it's true. Donald Trump grieves for the birds. <laughs> Here he is attending a wake for a beloved chicken. The... <laughs> the, the funeral was open bucket. It was... <laughs> Rest in 12 piece. <laughs> no. Man, I could go for some. I could go for some right now. Always. I'm ready. 
Johnny Mustard. According to the president, birds aren't the only victims of windmills. And they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? <laughs> Of course, windmills cause cancer. That's why everyone in Holland is dead. <laughs> also, noise does not cause cancer. Although, I believe listening to Donald Trump might cause brain damage. 